how's it, how's it? We've all been there with our photography that you are trying to take a photograph, just willing it to happen. And the more that you will it to happen, the less it doesn't. This is the law of reversed effort at work. And it's why your photography doesn't flow and grow in and is a relaxing experience like you want it to be. The best example of reversed effort is probably, you know, trying to fall asleep. We've all been there, you're tossing and you're turning, you just, it does not happen. And the more that you will yourself to sleep, the more it, well, it doesn't, does it? Until you find yourself, it's like four o'clock in the morning, you're just like, ah. It was Aldous Huxley who came up with this idea of reversed effort when he said that the more that you try with conscious will to do something, the less likely you are to succeed. And this manifests itself in our photography time and time again. In my own case, like when I used to take portraits in the studio, even though, you know, I kind of knew my way around a camera and, and there was nothing that I had to kind of worry too much about from a technical standpoint, often it just wasn't gelling. I just, it wasn't going, but I, I knew I wanted that photograph. And the problem is that I was kind of trying to cling on to it trying to grab the idea too hard. When instead, I should have just committed myself to the process, to surrender myself to photography. The way that you can do this is actually remarkably simple. And, and I owe a debt to a lady called Mel Robbins, I think she's, her name is, who has this audiobook, a series of books about a process that she calls the five, four, three, two, one process. And I was listening to this and I thought, this is, I, what a great idea to use in photography. How to get back in touch with that creative spirit that dwells inside us, but often that we're sabotaging on the way out because we're putting loads of roadblocks in the way. So simply summed up, Basically what she's suggesting is every time that you want to do something and you dwell on it for too long, your mind will say no. And in photography's case, you will sit there looking at a picture, they go, I quite like the look of that. And you will go, ah, okay, well, what are my options to photograph this? What lenses can I use? What exposures can I, you know, employ? Uh, will it be color? Will it be black and white? You know, so, We've kind of gone from being enthralled about the, the system, or about, about, the, about the image or the subject that we see in front of us, and have now started dwelling upon the technicalities of things. So that creative spark has you know, flitted away. So instead of doing all this, the next time you're out photographing, and I would encourage you to do this as a session that's separate from maybe working on a specific thing or task. This is all about the flow of creativity, of, of unclogging that, that journey <laughs> within you uh, to, to allow you to express yourself you know, freely without inhibition, is to simply see something that interests you. you go five, four, three, two, one, shoot it. Look at me using the word shoot. As I, I could say, you must take a you know, composed photograph and stuff. But just, that's the whole point. Throw technicalities. Throw all of the rules or anything like that to the wind. Go with your instinct. Just take the camera and shoot. Don't ask questions of yourself. Don't allow yourself to become mired in what's right or what's wrong. Just go with your gut instinct. Now, of course, you're not going to get amazing photographs every single time. I mean, that would be foolish to even think that way. But what you are going to do is you are going to start learning to trust your gut. And of course, the more that you are, you know, kind of comfortable and, and sort of in tune with the technical aspects of the compositional aspects, all those other bits, the more that that becomes second nature. Now, if you are sort of sitting here thinking, oh, do you know, Alex, um, I, I, how do I set the exposures? But what about this? And what about that? Okay. The whole point here is just to go with it. So in regards to your exposures, you can either set your camera to P, you know, P for professional, <laughs> right? So there's nothing wrong with it. Don't just use it. Okay. In this case, we are just kind of worrying more about the visual 
interpretation of a scene rather than all the technical bits, right? Or you, if you're feeling daring, you could dip your toe into the sunny F16 rule. Now, I'm sure a couple of you guys are going, ah, what is this sunny F16? I've not heard of this thing. What is this? This is actually one of the, it is a hard and fast rule in photography. There aren't very many of them, but this is one of them. So basically on a sunny day, so it's clear blue sky when the sun is at the highest in the sky, at F16, your shutter speed will be the same as the ISO of the film. So if your film is 100 ISO, then a correct exposure at midday on a clear blue day sky, right, with proper sun, it is going to be F16 at a hundredth of a second. If you have 3,200 ISO film or your camera set to that, then your shutter speed will be 3,200. It's as simple as that. And then of course you branch off into the, the various ideas later on. So cloudy day be F8, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And rather than get too much into it here, if you want to explore that, I'm gonna be touching on it in an episode of the five minute photo school soon. In addition, if anybody in the comments wants to sort of expand on the sunny F16 rule, please feel free to. I, I love the exchange of information because don't forget that we are all on different paths in our photography. And we, you know, the more that we can share our knowledge, our combined knowledge, then the, the richer the experience in the community will be for everybody. Anyway, back to the five, four, three, two, one, right? And so, yeah, when you're out there, just photograph, just choose a lens. You know, if you have a prime lens, that's cool. If you have a zoom lens, try and just keep it to one, uh, you know, one focal length. Don't zoom around. I mean, tape it, tape up the barrel if you want, you know, so you can't actually move it. Uh, you know, try this, right? The whole point of this process is to get you creative, is to get you to trust that instinct inside of you. Now, first, that instinct is going to lead you somewhat astray, and that's okay, right? The point is to go and look through all your resulting images and go, okay, that didn't work, that didn't work, that didn't work, that, ah, that's got some, that's got some promise. I like this. And that's really kind of what we're looking to do here is to get you reconnected with being relaxed about taking photographs to commit yourself to that process of photography where you are not worrying about all the other things that are contributing to you not having a great image. If at this point you're thinking all of this sounds like a bit of gobbledygook, kind of mindfulness hooey, right? Think about when you either listen to, you know, great photographers or anybody who's a master of, of a skill and they tell you that they don't really think about it too much. That a great pianist isn't thinking about the individual notes, about how they are playing. They are relaxed when they are playing. You yourself do this without knowing about it. You ride a bicycle. Now, you don't think about riding a bicycle. You get on it and you just ride it. If you were to write an instruction manual on how to ride a bike, it would be pages and pages and pages of instructions. But you learn to trust your instincts with that. So that's, I, I, again, if you're thinking that this is maybe not for you, give it a whirl. You're gonna fall off the bike one or two times, but eventually you're gonna find that this makes your photography so much stronger and will be a skill that will pay dividends for you down the line for years to come. So remember, when you're out there, Next time you see a photograph, five, four, three, two, one, and just shoot it. You're gonna end up with lots of pictures that you think are mistakes when you do this exercise, but rather than throw them away, which would be a huge mistake, follow the advice in this video here. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.